I'm going to talk about scrapbooks and how I use them. Um, I've mentioned before to other folks I use scrapbooks a lot like a checklist. Uh, if you haven't used scrapbooks before, they're completely customizable. You do not have to use what are all the standards in there. Um, while I have used some of them to create my own, which are all these ones that I'm highlighting here, I have created specific scrapbooks for drawing types, like here RCP obviously, reflected ceiling plan, floor plan, roof plan, MPE plans, utility site plans, grading site plans, elevations, um, these are in no particular order, uh, BMP site plans, BMPs, uh, that's uh, something we use here locally, best management practices for stormwater runoff. Um, construction site plan, landscape site plan, general site plan information, um, schedules, sections, all of them have real specific information within each one of those items. Uh, the one drawing I have open right now is a site plan and you can see I have little sub drawing folders here. One of them is just general graphics and notes where I can drag in any type of graphic I want. You can see the trees here. You just pick and bring them in at will. Um, they, I use them like a checklist because I know when I've used up all of these items within a given page, or at least analyze whether I need them, I know I've got the information I need, at least for my local building departments. Um, I deal with several different building departments in the area, so I will have specific ones for different counties or towns or for developments. Um, so there might be something here, which this one in particular is just a general note. Um, and it's kind of nice because you can go in and edit these notes. If I go edit, it opens up the note and you can go in and edit for whatever you need for that information. And then when you save, it updates it into this fold or right to this folder right here. Um, so going back to the site plan drawing, if I wanted those notes on this particular site plan, I just pick it up and I grab it and I can place it anywhere I want. Um, What's nice with the text is it's all editable for size and height, and then it all adjusts accordingly to whatever you need it to fit. Um, makes for a really nice, simple way to keep your notes consistent within given plans. Um, and this one, this this one wouldn't fit, so I'd probably resize it a different way, and it probably doesn't apply to this particular drawing, anyways. Uh, but I use these. Um, Especially, you know, site plans are a good example because I do a lot of different site plans on a given project. On this one that is called a construction site plan. It gives real specific information of how the contractor utilizes the site with fencing and in our case where snow storage is. Um, and it tells them what they can and can't do with vegetation, things like that. So there's a lot of specific notation that goes on that. Um, the next typical one I do is utilities, which shows where all the utility information comes from. Um, and how that's applied to the site. So for scrapbooks, I would go to my utility site plan scrapbook. And it basically has all these notes on here and things that I want to make sure I've included in line types and things like that that I want to make sure are on the plan. And so I'll just go through. And while you can't quite read it at the distance, it, for me it's just a checklist. I'll just click one, I'll bring it in, I'll look at it, evaluate what I need to have, yep, that's for the you know one inch residential water service line from existing meter box to curb stop and gate valve and garage. So I know to apply that line. Then I go to the next note and like I said, works like a checklist. Once I've gone through that list, I know I have everything on my utility site plan that I need. There are obviously certain sites where you might have something unique and then you have to add that note as a specific element to that site, but it gives you at least a base to start with. Um, the next drawing here is a grading site plan, and so again, I would go to my grading site plan notes, and it has all specific information that I would have, a, a note tag here which gives elevations, and on all of my projects, um, this one again is still in, in working form, I would actually pin each one of the corners. Um, and this one you can see it still doesn't have the line work similar to what I do in the floor plans I also overlay the line work on the site plan so you have a nice crisp line instead of seeing the raster image which granted in this plan uh, you know I've made the comment when you're looking at it like this you basically have your nose planted to the sheet which you never see it like this um, I also have this um, in edit mode under low quality so that it works quickly the quality that prints is much higher than what you're seeing here um, so I use these for every type of drawing. As an example, here's elevations. I have elevation scrapbooks set up. Uh, 
here and within elevations and within different scrapbooks there might be multiple pages like this one just has general notes and then I'll look at it specific because some of the notes apply to a specific county and then I apply that note onto the sheet just like that but I also have you can see in here there's elevation I call it PS notes for paper space the old AutoCAD in me but it has things like elevation marks which you can see have already been loaded in here it has specific notes um, and some of this stuff is evolving for instance here um, these are specific notes to how the trim might be so I look at it I know it's trim at stone veneer so I'll know I, I'm gonna have that note there I may have to edit those specific notes if I change the trim to some different type of trim but at least I know that I have those specific notes in there likewise here I can bring in um, that's window trim at stone veneer. I can bring in uh, different types of materials and different notes that apply to those specific drawings. Makes it very simple to make sure I've got everything covered that I would have typically on any of my sets of drawings. Um, as an example, on floor plans, you can see there's lots of different styles of notes and you know for instance here these are door and window tags so I'll, I'll bring in here and this one's already got all the window t or door tags and this is the door tag and the triangles um, I mean the diamonds are the window tags um, likewise things like elevations I'll bring those in so I can pin the floor elevations um, real specific things like building grid lines you know if I bring one of those in I think it's doing an auto save So here it just brought this in. Um, in theory, I should have gone in and made this a group, which is real easy to do. If I go edit, highlight those two, make them a group, file, save. Now when I go back to my floor plans and pick this out, it'll bring both in, which is nice. And then the way you place these items out of, which is really, I think, super powerful, hopefully never changes with layout, is it always brings in a central grip point that you can place anywhere you like which is really I think a wonderful thing you can place it at the end here um, or you can if you have something that is equidistant about another post you can then copy these things and place them or move them anywhere about that given point which I think is a very powerful feature I'm going to delete that one out of there because it doesn't belong. So then I would place that grid line and then copy it to each point. And then I extend those lines to a given line that I'll establish to make them all look nice and neat and clean. Um, so like I said, I keep these for every type of drawing file. If you look on sections, I'll go through on sections. I believe those are at the close to the bottom. Oops. There, I got it. And then you can see that every type of drawing, you can have different things arranged. You can have notation for wall assemblies. And these are all within the section scrapbook, floor assemblies, roof assemblies, section general notes. And you can see those have been plopped in there. And what's really powerful is you can size them to fit the drawing because every drawing is going to be a little bit different in how you structure it and lay it out. Um, same with going to even interior elevations. And my eyes are getting bad. Maybe I don't have... Actually, I don't think I have one yet for interior elevations. I'm still working on building my library. Uh, the one that I hear a lot of people, of course, want to have are ones for MPE. And these I just, I just did from scratch and just drew them in layout. And so in MPE I have um graphics and these graphics have every graphic that i typically use you know like a ceiling fan and you can edit these and make them look any way you want all the outlets and light fixtures and and so they become items that you can really you know have a standard and it's totally customizable you can set it up any way you want um, you can edit them. You can start with one of the other files and edit them. A lot of them I did from scratch. You know, if you want to see, this is my MPE 
sheet. And what it does is it's just a layout file. So this is the MP power and signal. So these are all just individual notes that I place on the plan. Um, these are the pages within that given file. So these are, that one doesn't have much on it, but these are the graphics. And so if I zoom in, you can see these are all set up and simple enough to draw. I know a lot of people are looking for symbols and my comment was it's, they're so generic and easy to draw, it takes what maybe half an hour to draw a whole symbol library from what you may have had in AutoCAD. And then you can make them nicer. Some of them are, uh, features are really nice, like you can put a, you know, about this, I've got this as a solid fill in here, but you can also make that fill semi-transparent so you can still see stuff behind it or you can have it so it's totally whiting out. And I do that on, um, a good example of that is on the elevations. So the elevations, I kind of like to see some of the things behind. So if I zoom in here, you can see even though it's a white background, it's actually semi-transparent so you can see through it, which you know, it's not a feature you can easily do or possibly do in AutoCAD. Uh, I think it graphically makes it for something really exciting. And of course, you can set that to any color you want. I use white just because it pops really well. Um, but if you're printing color, you can really set any of these colors to anything you want in layout. But the scrapbooks are extremely powerful. I think that they really allow you to uh, customize your drawings in many ways. Um, you can create any type of arrows or leaders you want, whether, you know, some of the, even the examples that they have, you know, as standards show you what's possible for creating unique and different types of drawing symbols. It's really up to you. You don't have to create standards that are considered industry standards. Some of them I do are pretty industry standard, but um, I've used a little bit to customize them to make them a little more effective graphically.